Hi, this is Rosemary, back to show you how to really felt that bag that we started in the last uh, in the last session that we had. So I hope that since you've started that bag with me and you've laid out that bag with me, that you have been pressing for about an hour, maybe 45 minutes on that bag. Now what's happening to that bag as you do it is that those fibers, which have scales on them, those scales are starting to stand up and link. I'm going to show you how you know whether they're linked. So looking right here, you can see that I've been pressing right here. We can still see some of the fibers here, but pretty much it's nice and flat. Notice that I have my hand here all the time, always pushing on this edge. Look at how smooth those edges are. Look at how smooth the top of my bag is. And we didn't cut it. We were simply sculpting with wool. Remember, we had that fiber that ran this way, and then we had those fibers that wrapped around to create that nice edge. Now, you can tell it's starting to felt by doing a gentle pinch and lifting up. Notice you can see that that's material. I'm not lifting up fibers. I'm lifting up material. Now, we're going to press that back down again. But all the time that you've been pressing, you've had a gentle inward press, and you're pushing right up against that resist. I never have any students who end up with flaps inside of their bags because they are always pushing up against that resist. Once you've done that pushing, and when you push, notice that we've got nice soapy water splashing up between your fingers. That's exactly the way you want it to be. Now when I start to rub, which is what we're doing because our material is starting to felt, we're going to do just gentle jiggles. We're not pushing hard, just like you're petting a newborn kitten or puppy just very gently you're going to be doing this and notice I'm still patting and then rubbing just a little bit very small jiggles so we're still aware that we might move the fiber we're not getting rough with it yet and then one of the things I'm doing to keep that edge nice and smooth is I'm rubbing around the edge like this it's really wonderful I'll start then to do little circles now you're going to take about 15 20 minutes doing this kind of jiggle I've been doing it before you came Okay, and then you'll be able to start to do these nice little circles with your hand and make sure you're doing it on both sides. Notice how our, our pattern here is nice and flat with our wool. Oh, I love working with wool and soap. That's why I've been doing this for over 15 years. And notice that as I'm felting, I'm constantly aware of the shape. I am rubbing in the direction of the shape. I've already done the jiggles and the circles here, and you can see that I'm starting to be able to do just a little more rough rub on this side. This happens over a period of time. I once asked an instructor, can you learn to felt over a video or with a book? And he very curtly said, no. So what I learned was that um, it's... It's a very long and involved process to learn how to felt. So this rubbing that I'm showing you is not happening immediately. It's taking maybe a half an hour or 45 minutes again for you to do after you've finished padding. So notice this is taking a number of hours to do. So find a good movie and then just start to enjoy that process. You'll know when you can rub so that because the fibers don't move as much. You're not moving those fibers around. If you start to see those fibers, and I don't have any here, rolling and making bumps, then you have something called pilling going on. Pull back a little. Don't rub so hard. Okay, just be ever so gentle with these. In time, you'll be able to rub more. The next thing you do once you get this rubbing done is you want to do something called palming. And that means that you're slipping your hand inside of this and you're using the palm of your hand right here and you're rubbing right on the inside. Now, as you're palming, there we go. There's a little pilling. We're going we're gonna to pull back a little bit, put a little extra soap there, and I'm going to rub in the direction of that fiber so that I don't have it standing up. Okay. There we go. I'm doing little gentle circles on the inside of this bag. Now, we're getting ready to remove some of the soap from between the fibers here. You can see that that bag that started out as lots of Whipsby fibers is now pretty much holding together and it's holding its shape. We want to make sure that we're getting the inside of the bag and that's what palming does. Inside here we have our resist. I'm going to put my hand right inside here and rub on the inside of that. So we're, we're felting the inside of the bag. There are those funny flaps that you saw me do. So now I'm going to put my hand right here and I'm going to rub 
right here with these two hands and notice that that disappears. But what you've got is a nice strong flap that, that will be able to not rip when you're using it over and over again because you were aware of those stress points when you were laying it out. So I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to keep rubbing this between my two hands and I'm going to be taking the resist out from inside. Pretty exciting. So now, as you can see, I've got this resist out. Don't need it anymore. Okay, and I'm just using my hands inside that bag to felt that just a little more. Hey, you'll get a little messy. That's something that happens. I can also move the water off my tray. Look at all the dirt that's come out and look at how white our wool is starting to become. Now, the next thing we have to do, we've got a lot of soap here. It's really wonderful. Our hands are slipping right over that wool, but pretty soon we're not gonna leave that. As you can see, this bag's very, very cohesive. And I'm rubbing it, and I have my fingers inside right here, and I'm shaping it along my fingers. So any, any seam that I have is now being rubbed out. You can no longer see where, my resi where I had it wrapped around my resist, so my resist was covered. We ha now have nice, clean edges right here. But it's about time to get that soap out because we want this to be tighter and we want our fibers to be tighter. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to roll this up and begin removing the soap. And when I do so, I'm going to squeeze but never twist. Once I do that, I want to get a little more soap out. I can rub it a little more, tighten up those fibers, and then I'm going to get a little bit more soap out. And I'm going to do that by dunking that in water. I've got some water that has a little bit of soap splashed in it, but really it's pretty clear water. When I'm doing this inside the house, I'll run it under the faucet until the water runs clear, or nearly clear. But for now, I'm just going to dunk that right in that water. When I'm doing it outside, I'm doing this. Look how clean that is. You're not seeing any dirt at all coming out. You're seeing soap, but not dirt. Once again, I'm going to lift this up, and I'm going to roll it up. It's okay that we got a little soap on it because we're going to do another rinse out in a minute. And we're going to squeeze, but we're not going to twist. The next thing we're going to do is do something called hard, what I call hardening the wool. Notice that I've got this piece in here. I just grab this little piece and it comes right out and it doesn't move my fibers. But I'm going to do what's called hardening the wool. It's still pretty spongy right now. Okay, I'm going to rub the wool against itself. People think that I wear these rings on my fingers because, I, uh, because I'm vain or because they have some sort of great value. I suppose they're silver rings, so they're pretty, but I didn't pay a lot for them. The point is that I wear them because they add friction when I felt. So I watch the ring that I buy. Rubbing the wool against itself is a way of using the wool itself to make friction. When I make hats, I'll use a washboard. When I make bags, unless I want to make that bag really stiff and hard, I just rub the wool against itself. And as you can see, and, and if you do this, you'll be able to feel this wool is now starting to become closer and to harden. The thing to remember at this stage is that the direction you rub is the direction it's going to shrink. So I'm going to keep doing this for a while, and as I do this, you do this to yours too. Okay, so I've been rubbing this for quite a while now. And remember how I told you just do it softly like you were patting a little kitty or a doggy or something like that? Well, now I'm just doing this sometimes while I'm rubbing it. I'm, I'm bracing my arms right on my knees so that I have a lot of pressure on this because right now this wool is hard. There is nothing you can do to get this wool apart. We have felt. And this is wonderful. The last thing I'm going to do before I finish this bag, and you can decide how hard you want it. Sometimes I want them soft, sometimes I want them hard. You can decide how hard you want the wool once you get to this stage. Um, even a, a soft felted bag will not fall apart if you have laid it out right. You can see that I've got the layouts correct. I'm in here, I'm getting rid of some of my, making sure I don't have flaps. It's not quite the shape we want it to be yet, but I'm gonna dunk it in here and make sure that it's clean. So that's, that's pretty clean. Like I say, I usually run it under a faucet 
until it's until the water runs clean so that's pretty clean especially if you're doing it outside then I'm going to take this wool and I'm going to start to shape it and I've always been aware of the shape from the very beginning but right now see how I've got a ripley top I'm going to lay it right back on my tray so I can do a final shaping on my bag and this is when these rings are really important I'm using the friction on these two fingers to make sure that I am forming and I'm pushing with these two fingers to make sure that I am forming a good edge. This is especially important when you're forming those edges. And I'm going to do it right here. I'll use the tops of these fingers like little washboards to get this edge just right. And then I'm going to rub right here. As I rub, the wool shrinks and it goes flat. One of the things that's very cool is that you, because you've shaped this so well, you already have a very good shape to the flap on your bag that you can do. And if you have a piece that you feel like dips in a little bit, you just give a little tug and you can bring it right out there. Then hold your fingers and rub right along the edge. As I say, using these fingers with the rings on them usually works better than anything else. The fingers, the tips of my fingers and my rings for forming my bag. So once you've done that, you just keep rubbing it till it gets to be the shape that you want. And then you're going to let it dry. In our next session, we are going to talk about what we do to make this bag pretty. There are a number of ways to embellish this bag. I showed you one way in this bag in the layout where you can just lay the wool right into the bag. There are other techniques um, such as needle felting or something called tekamet that's used, in the, uh, used around Kazakhstan that you can use to lay patterns out in your bags. So join me again and we'll show you the finished bag and how to embellish it and make it pretty. Right now you have materials, so realize you can sew on this bag. You can do anything you want to make this bag be the bag that you want it to be. I'm going to finish um, rubbing on this bag and I will see you next time as we talk about embellishing the bag and how to make that bag pretty and how to add a strap to it. Thanks and don't forget to subscribe.